Greetings, greetings. My name is Susan and welcome to a, another vlog here on my corner of the interwebs. It is Sunday. It's Sunday, late Sunday morning. I am currently sitting in my vehicle in a parking lot of a shopping center that looks like every other parking lot and shopping center in every other major city in North America. Honestly, it's like a cookie cutter. I have plans today to go into, uh, I have to do a couple of errands for one thing. Um, I'm headed into Michael's of all places, a place I very rarely go, but I'm on a mission. Uh, and then I have to go over to pick up some groceries and all of that for the week and then do some meal prep and some other home things all day today. Um, but the whole reason I'm going into uh, Michael's is because I want to get some of the prim ergonomic circular needles and I want to give them a try. Uh, I've been having, um, you know, hand pain. I always have hand pain. You know, when you work with your hands all the time, it's just like a normal occurrence. And I was watching um, the, is it Carlos and Arne, Arne, whatever video. I don't watch their channel very often, but I just happened to catch one of their videos talking about needles and they were sharing those needles saying that they really love them. And I do love prim uh, ergonomic crochet hooks. Those are my favorite hooks. And I try to buy them up in every size whenever I can find them. I didn't realize that they're circular needles while their tips are plastic, um, but they almost look like toothbrushes. Uh, they are um, the cable I didn't I thought the cable was plastic but no the cable is a wire um, like one of those stainless steel wires like you would have with um, whatchamacallit I, um, I'm getting distracted here by people going into L.L. Bean and I didn't realize that was an L.L. Bean across the street the last I remember it being was a um, oh pure 21 is that right pure one no pure 21 pure one one is a store that had wicker furniture that went out of business and the other is a historical site in Halifax. I can't remember which one. Uh, I didn't realize that the cords uh, for the circular uh, prim needles were uh, plast like basically rubber plastic coated um, wire. So very similar to the Chiaogu needles. And I thought, well, if that's the case, I might actually want to give it a go. So um, I want to try them out. And, uh, and I'm also looking forward to using a needle, a knitting needle that has a uh, longer needle tip. Um, what I've been finding with my circular needles that I've been using, especially my interchangeable ones, is that the uh, needles themselves are way too short and they're sitting in an odd spot in the palm of my hand and it's causing me hand pain. And so I've realized that I need to have much longer tips, which means um, I need none of my circular needles are really long enough, like the interchangeable ones anyway. Um, so I've been replacing some of them with fixed circulars, but I'm also remembering to, you know, you can have so many different interchangeable needle sets and Lord knows I've purchased so many over the years. I've been knitting since like the year 2000 and I've had every kind of needle set you can imagine. You quickly realize, you know, once you find out the kinds of things you like to knit, your preferred needle sizes and it almost feels that having an interchangeable needle set seems a little pointless sometimes when you're always using the same needles or the same like four needles all the time and for me um if we exclude socks but in some cases even socks my needles i tend to use sizes between a three millimeter and uh, a six somewhere around there so 
yeah, we're going to go and get um, the, uh, check out those needles and then uh, go to the grocery store. I also want to see if there's anything like in Michael's that I can use for um, some kind of storage for needles. I'm going to look. There's some good coupons that are going on right now, so I might be able to find something good. Oh, sorry. Husband just sent me a text. Uh, one of the things I am wearing, which you can see here, is um, a new sweater I just finished. And I will try to shoot some footage at some point um, of the complete finished object, but I haven't blocked it. And to be quite honest, I don't think I am going to block it unless um, it gets dirty or something like that, because the yarn is like a combination of wool and acrylic so and it's so fuzzy it like I don't know it doesn't really need to be blocked you can see it's like super super fuzzy uh but this is the uh totally tubular turtleneck by Park Williams which is one of her newer patterns that came out and I had cast this on a while ago using this new Lang yarn that we got at the at Stash and I and I'm a sucker for novelty yarn. Like that's, that's, that's my thing right now. I love novelty yarn. Give me things with textures. Give me things that are a little weird and I am all over it. So, uh, this yarn came in these giant cakes that were like the size of my head. And, uh, and it's so much fun to knit with and the resulting sweater is so light and it is a bulky weight yarn. So, this did knit up very quickly. It's just, I ended up striping everything and I didn't really plan out the stripe sequence I was doing. I was just kind of making it up as I went. So the reason it took me longer is that, um, one, I had to finish one sleeve and the needles I was using were, were making my hands feel tired. Um, until I switched to double points and then I felt a little, a little better, but I had to, remove the turtleneck part uh, because the turtleneck I you start with the sweater starting from the top down so you start off with the neck and then it turns into the raglan increases and stuff so I did that but I cast on with the pink initially and I really should have instead of just like going into the first part of the yoke um, in pink I should have done that in yellow um, but the result ended up being that all of the rest of the sweater ended in yellow and it was just the top part was still pink and it was just driving me absolutely bananas. But also my cast on edge was really tight. So last night um, while I was binging Netflix and I'll talk about the show I binged later, um, I it took me like three hours <laughs> to unpick this yarn and pick up the stitches and then I finally knit the neck up, but I didn't do the full turtleneck. I only did six inches as opposed to the recommended 12, um, which is fine by me. And uh, yeah, I really like how it looks now. It's nice and cozy. Um, but I wanted to get the sweater done because we are expecting snow this week and uh, it's cold outside right now. It's like, it ain't summer anymore, folks. And uh, yeah, it's gonna keep getting cold until we get a Chinook and then, you know, winter is here. But anyway, that's the end of my story. I am going to go into Michael's now and let's see what we can find, shall we? Let's do it. Let's go. Jessup, if you've never met Jessup before, he is our pretty, pretty princess of a high maintenance house cat. Yeah, aren't you? Mm -hmm. He wanted attention now because I just came home and he just spends all of the time wandering around meowing. 
until someone picks him up and gives him a great big hug. But I think he's going to try to get on my table, which I don't want him to do. No. So I'm going to put him down on my chair, which he's not into. Anyway, I'm home. I want to show you my sweater. So look at this. Look at this. Look at this. What, what, what? Um, this is the totally tubular turtleneck by Park Williams. I finished it this morning. I cast off the neck this morning and yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's also really bloody warm right now and I'm going to have to take it off eventually um, because it's way too warm and I think it might be kind of see-through. As I'm kind of looking in the camera, I'm wearing a hot pink like sports bra and I think you can see it through it. Oh well, whatever. That's fine. But yeah, I striped it. The yarn is... I have a label. The yarn is uh, Lang Yarns Cloud Tweed Superwash. It is 84% wool, 10% nylon, 6% alpaca, and it's called the Lang Cloud Tweed. And I have two colors. I have citrus and berry. So citrus is the yellow, pink is the berry. Here are two half skeins, half balls. Look at the size of these things. They're like, they are the size of the size of my face. These are bigger than my face. They're huge. Um, I can't quite remember off the top of my head right now how many of these I used for the size that I made. I think I made the size two, maybe the size three. Can't recall. But it does have a lot of positive ease on me, which is what I wanted. I did knit it a little longer than what was intended. I think the original one, the ribbing would have been right here. And I wanted to make it a bit longer because the idea would be to like, kind of, I wanted to be able to, to like tuck it in and be kind of sloppy about it. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with how it turned out. The sleeves are extra long and the idea being to roll up the cuff and again just like with the neck I didn't do the full length of the cuffs because um, I was tired of knitting to be honest. Anyway, um, made it back, got my groceries, braved the traffic, it is gray and cold out there. Perfect knitting weather, which um, I need to get back on my MCAL knitting. Do you want to see what I have so far? Let me show you what I have so far. So I, in the previous episode, you will have seen I finished one side of Clue 2. And I have picked up stitches and I'm currently working on the second side of Clue 2. So I need to keep working on that so I can start Clue 3. I have a feeling I'm going to end up going a little slower than other folks, which is fine. I'm going to embrace my pace and I'm just going to keep vlogging my process and all of that as I'm going. Um, yes, up. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to work on those and the clue three is pretty cool. Is Ryan home? No, looks like that was somebody else. I feel like this is really bright. Let me just turn it down. Okay, it's a little less blinding. Apologize for the glare and everything that's on my glasses. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Yeah, clue three looks really, really cool. And I am really excited to start it because those wacky slip stitches that almost look like, you know what it looks like? It looks like the tread of like an industrial floor or something. Like, I don't know what that would be called, but it, it reminds me of a garage. 
I guess, or a garage. Garage? Garage. Garage sounds like I'm saying something closer to vag, which is kind of like a human garage. <laughs> what? Okay. Brain. Uh, focus. Focus. Uh, yeah, that pattern is really, really cool. And I need to print it out. I have to print out a couple of other patterns. I kept meaning to do it when I was at work this week, but I'm um, this past week, but I just kept forgetting. Yeah, I want to work on that. Do you want to see the needles that I got? Let's take a look at the needles. Okay, as I mentioned previously, my whole point of going to Michael's was to get the PIM needles. You can see them here. There we go. Ergonomic ones. These are the four millimeter. I'm going to open them. Ooh. Oh. All right. Oh, those feel nice. Okay. So these um, are the PIM Ergonomics Circular Knitting Needles. These are 32 inch cords. Um, the needles themselves, I think they're hard plastic. Oh, got a little, it's a little sticky there with the cable. But you can see the, the needle here. Let's see, focus there. And you can see the tip is, you know, these are kind of triangular, but not quite. They're not as harsh of a triangle as other needles I've tried, but they do have this really great tip, which apparently is really good for doing Norwegian purl, um, for a Norwegian purling method, which is when I'm knitting continental, that is how I purl because my tension is really loose otherwise. So I do a Norwegian purl. Um, and if you're curious about how to do a new Norwegian pearl and stuff like that, I am not filming a tutorial for that, um, but you can definitely Google it and find it. And it's, there are videos on YouTube that'll show you. But I wanted to try these and I'm already liking how they feel. Like they're a nice size. I have like long hands, but they're very narrow. So it's like a weird thing to be able to find a needle that is long enough for, for me to hold, but not too long, you know what I mean? Anyway, and the cable, the cable isn't like weird at all. The cable is just like a Chiaogu cable. So there's no memory in it at all, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I have three sizes of those. This is the four mil. I have a five millimeter. And then I also have a four and a half. So I'm going to either switch these out um, from, switch another set of needles out from another project. There's something weird on this cable. And I think I need to put, I think the reading glasses need to go on in order for me to see what's going on there if it's just like adhesive or what, or if it's a fault. I think it's a fault in the cord. Dang, I'm gonna have to bring that back. All right, let's put those back in the, shoot, I spoke too soon. Ugh. I don't wanna have to drive all the way back to Michael's to return those or exchange them. Hopefully the other ones aren't like that too. Yeah, there's just like a little imperfection in the uh, in the cable. I'm gonna have to double check the other ones just to be sure. I don't know if it's because when I picked these up, there was one box that was a slightly different color. Oh, oh, you know what? Weirdly. This is the only one that has a blue cable. The other ones are just silver. So maybe it has to do with the blue coating on there. Okay, 
It's a good thing I had this the receipt emailed to me so then I can return them. Um, switch them out for something else. Okay, I'll do that. Other things on the docket today, not a whole lot. Uh, I am going to eat a snack and all that stuff, do some laundry. I think first I'm just gonna sit and not do a whole lot, I think. I'm listening to an audiobook right now um, called The Road to Roswell. And it is, I ended up getting it on Libro FM, which is an awesome alternative to Audible if you're ever looking for audiobooks to like outside of uh, using the Libby app for libraries. Uh, it is a, you pay a subscription, there's a fee every month, and then you get a single credit, but you get to use that credit to buy a book. And then you get to keep that book forever. So it's essentially like Audible, but the cool thing about it is that the money isn't going to Amazon, it's going to local booksellers. So you choose a independent bookstore of your, like in your community and stuff. So um, mine is attached to the next page, which is one of my favorite bookstores here in Calgary. And uh, yeah, the book is, it's like a, I, so far it's not like a rom-com, so far it's just like a goofy, like action comedy so far about a woman, a young woman who is going to Roswell, New Mexico uh, for the wedding of her like best friend from college. And she's the, the maid of honor and the, her friend is getting married uh, at the uh, National UFO Museum. And uh, anyway, she doesn't believe in aliens, she doesn't believe in UFOs, but it's at the same time as the UFO festival and stuff in New Mexico. And anyway, she ends up getting abducted by an alien. And there's like this weird, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Paul that has Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in it. It has that kind of energy. Like it really does have that kind of energy, um, which I'm quite enjoying. Although I'm really annoyed because like I'm in, the, I'm about like maybe a, almost a quarter of the way through it. And, and I just want, I'm like, okay, this is apparently taking place in present day they're talking about cell phones and all that stuff and I'm like why why is the character Francie why why does she keep trying to call places like I would assume that she's either a young millennial or a Gen Z -er or something and I'm like as an elder millennial a geriatric millennial as they <laughs> as I recently learned I am I'm like, I don't talk on the phone. No, never. I would never talk on the phone. I get over, I try not to talk on the phone at all. At work, I, I, I really avoid the phone. I make people email me because like, I can control F my inbox. I can't control F my brain. So I'm like, I need, but also, ew, I don't wanna to talk to anybody on the phone. No, no. Um, but she like keeps trying to call people and she's like, I have to be quiet because the alien will hear me. And I'm like, A, you don't know if that alien has ears and B, you don't know if he understands you. C, and most, like, most importantly, why aren't you texting? Just, just text, text help. Oh my God, help, I've been abducted by an alien. We're in the middle of the desert. I can't get away. Send help. Why does she keep calling and leaving voicemails? And the voice, and like, whose inbox is completely full? Like, not enough people call me for my inbox to be full. I don't know. My brain just went into a gutter then about making a joke about a full inbox. Um, <laughs> happy Sunday. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm going to continue listening to that book while I eat a snack and I uh, relax a little bit before I get into the other stuff I got to do. And I'm also going to take the sweater off because, oh my gosh, it's really warm. 
it's going to be really great come Tuesday or even tomorrow night when we're supposed to be getting 10 to 15 centimeters of snow. Yes. Um, so I'm going to be very grateful for the sweater then, but right now I am very warm. So we're going to switch out to a t-shirt and do home stuff and going to get back on that MCAL train and then I will check in with you again at some point. But uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. for my crinkly rain jacket in a car on the side of the road. That's where I am. And I got my water. Um, yeah, it's Monday. It is about 15 minutes to six. My car is kind of fogging up, which is really annoying. Need to, there we go. Ugh. And today has been a fine day, I guess, but oh my gosh, the weather is just stupid. Like, I know I talk about how much I love winter, but like, Maybe I should have kept my 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 big old mouth shut <laughs> because it is gross, gross, gross outside right now. And I, you know, it's about I think the temperature on my car says it's minus two Celsius out there. I think it's about closer to minus ten Celsius with the wind chill. And it's been sort of precipitating all day. This morning it was misty, hazy, foggy, and then um, it's just been kind of like snowing, sort of. Right now it's just it's snowing, but it's like this in Calgary you don't necessarily get wet snow because it's so dry here. When it snows in Calgary, I feel like it just snows little flecks of styrofoam. And, you know, right now it's doing that, but simultaneously freezing everything. So it's just ice everywhere. My entire car, by the time I finished work to get out and deal with it, uh, it was covered in like an eighth of an inch of ice over the whole thing. <laughs> so needless to say, the roads are horrible. And um, yeah, I am really glad that I don't need to go anywhere else this evening. It's just so nasty out. But I want to tell you about a little bit more about the book that I'm reading. Um, which is uh, Road to Roswell by a person whose name I can't remember right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been, like, I've gotten really into it. I think because on Sunday, um, we had kind of like a home day of just occupying ourselves and, and all that stuff. And it was really nice. And I spent a lot of time knitting and then doing some other things and like house stuff and laundry and everything. And I was listening to the audiobook the entire time and that was so I managed to get through like the majority of it. I think I'm I only have like 3 or 4 hours left of listening to it. And you know, this book it's like it's a little there's a like elements of X-Files in there but more of the like humorous X-Files episodes. And uh, I think if you, if you're the type of person who enjoys 
sci-fi shows, but like not, I'm talking like not super, super hardcore science fiction. They say that it's a romantic comedy. And I think that there's starting to be a level of romance in it now towards the end, but it's definitely not an overt romantic comedy at all. Um, because the characters that are love interests, potential love interests, um, you have a bit of their relationship building and everything, but it's not really, I'm not really that invested in their relationship. I'm more invested in the relationship they have to the, like the main character, um, Francie. I am more invested in her relationship with the alien <laughs> than I am with her uh, relationship with um, uh, the other guy, Wade, and who is not an alien, as far as I know. It's also blowing my mind a little bit where, and this is, might be a bit of an annoyance thing that I have with some books and some movies and everything when it comes to timelines, especially when there are big things happening. And like, I, I totally understand that when you're going through a significant and often traumatic event that um, time simultaneously speeds up and slows, slows down. So a lot of different things can happen in a very short period of time, um, and especially when it comes to connecting with other people. But I mean, the characters in this book were on the run with this alien for three days, and only three days. And in that three days, they managed to like drive all around New Mexico and to Las Vegas while watching a bunch of different movies, while also, you know, trying to outrun the FBI and other things. And it just seems a little improbable to me that all of this stuff could have happened in such a short span of time, especially when it comes to how comfortable they are with each other and how they have learned to communicate with the alien and everything. I feel like that should have taken more time than it did. It shouldn't have been three days. It should have been like three weeks. But again, if there's an alien involved, aliens in theory can bend time and space. So maybe time is irrelevant. <laughs> the past, the future, the present is just a construct. <laughs> that book, I'm finding it very entertaining. And, uh, and as someone who watches a lot of shows about UFOs and, you know, I wouldn't say I have never been to the MUFON website, but I have. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, it's just, I find it very, very interesting. And if you're wondering, I am like 150% positive that we are not the only beings in the universe. And I will. Some people believe in God. I I believe in aliens. <laughs> so <laughs> I believe in life that we are not, that we are not alone. And whatever that looks like to other people, I like I wholeheartedly believe. If you haven't seen, if you have a subscription to Netflix and you haven't seen um uh shoot, what is it called? Oh, 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 oh. It's called Encounters. It's a limited series on Netflix. It's brilliant. And I watched it and I binge watched the entire thing one day. Granted, part of that, I had been decompressing and got a little loopy with some very nice drinks that I had that uh, can help a person calm down. Um, <laughs> So maybe I was already in a like stoner mindset a little, but it just, I don't know that, that whole series just confirmed with me that, oh my God. Yeah. There, there are totally, there have been aliens coming all the time, constantly. They've been here. They're here now. We don't know what they're doing and there are definitely other planets and, and that's like, and it's not, I thought I would be scared about it, but I'm not scared about it. Like it just, 
it makes me feel better knowing that we're not alone, that the earth is not the only thing, that there are other things. And how cool is that? Like to recognize that, you know, you're not the only, we're not the only civilization. There, there's probably millions of different civilizations everywhere. And that's so, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I've never seen a UFO, I've never seen an alien, never had a sighting. I've had paranormal experiences with ghosts before, but that's a story for another time. Uh, tonight I'm going to knit and I am going to listen to my audiobook and we're going to catch up on some TV that we have recorded from the weekend, including Big Brother, because that's... We've been watching Big Brother since the year 2000 or 1999 or whenever it came out in the U.S. We've been watching it for that long and I've seen every season. Yeah, I'm going to make pierogies for supper, especially because the weather is so like, bull. um, pierogies are nice and carb heavy and are going to be very, very, very delicious. So I'm excited for that. But I need to work on my uh, Wave of Change sweater pullover so that I can get it to the point to pick up the sleeves tomorrow in class, provided people show up to class tomorrow. We'll find out. But I do have to go to bed early tonight because um, I have a really big day tomorrow. That's it for me right now. I guess I'll check in with you a little later.